We are out exploring Australia's beautiful landscape, iconic wildlife, and diving the crystal clear waters of northern Queensland. This week we are at Radical Bay on Magnetic Island, surrounded by butterflies, koalas, and the most delicious sunsets. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew they call her home. Join us each week as we explore the planet both above and below the surface and see what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. Nothing here is ever what it seems Truth is stranger than a dream When you see the heart seem Like a curtain opening Soon it's coming to an end Truth is stranger than fiction What has always been it and will be open And I hope that things will pass away Behold the weight of glory What footage are you reviewing? We were getting an awesome macro shot of a spider uh, that was about to have its lunch of a butterfly. Even when you get close to Magnetic Island, even on sh offshore, you'll see these little blue butterflies like flying out to sea. I wonder where they're going, if they're like trying to make it to other islands. But that's pretty unique where you can get close to an, area, um, an island and there's just butterflies like surrounding it. And apparently it feels like it all comes, I mean there's butterflies all over the island, but this is definitely like their little... It's a hub. Yeah. It's their little enchanted butterfly forest. So. It's quite magical with the rays of light coming in. It's a mm -hmm. super beautiful sunny day. Yeah. Butterflies going everywhere. Flies in the trees and the scenery reminds me to Alice in Wonderland because you think like this kind of places or this kind of amount of butterfly it only can happen in the movies like Disney movies. Think this is a koala or a drop bear? Well, it how, depends. How, how do you tell the difference? Any, you, you can't see any visible fangs on this one, so it's really the size that determines the drop bear. But any warning is definitely for drop bears. You wouldn't be worried about koalas, but drop bears. Yeah. Proceed with caution. Let's go. Proceed with caution. So we're here in Magnetic Island uh, National Forest looking for koalas, but um, a lot of people don't know there's actually a subspecies of koala. and. Um, it was first described by Captain Cook and his crew when he came uh, and discovered Magnetic Island is that these little bear-like looking things would actually drop down out of the trees onto the crew. And so they called them drop bears. So it's a slightly larger subspecies of koala that is actually predatory and carnivorous, believe it or not. But you can tell the difference between a koala and a drop bear because the drop bears have actual like fangs that deliver small amounts of like a neurotoxin venom to the Pray. Are they like dangerous to people? So yes actually. Um, we saw a little sign that said it's the third leading cause of injuries to tourists on Magnetic Island. Cool. Yeah. Sketchy drop bears. Yeah. But it's always good. They recommended a wide brimmed hat. It confuses them so that they cannot actually f see from the trees down your neck. So it's imperative that you have a wide brimmed hat on. All right, I forgot yeah. mine today. You'll have yeah. to protect me from the drop bears. Uh-uh, get your own. <laughs> it's my first koala, a wild koala, and it's sleeping. It is the cutest boss ever that I could imagine. <laughs> It's a cute one, it's kind of small, I don't see fangs. Oh, it's okay.
dark wall effects that we have in our... Leaf. So they were introduced here in 1936, and there's rumors that... So this is a eucalyptus leaf. It smells amazing. But um, there's rumors that it gets them high because there's a lot of toxins, and it's toxic to almost every other animal other than the koala. But it doesn't actually get them high at all. But what it does do is it takes a lot of energy to get any sort of nutrients out of the eucalyptus. So they eat these all day and then they sleep all day because they just don't have a lot of energy. So that is what they eat. That's what they're doing here. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Yeah, I would say that this is probably my favorite anchorage that we've had Sylphia in yet or my favorite spot that we've been in the boat yet of Australia. And it's, it's crazy because we're only a few miles from Townsville, which is one of the bigger cities in like the northern part of Queensland. And it feels like we're the only people on earth right now. There's no boats here, so probably we'll just spend the night alone. Maybe go yeah. to the beach, have dinner, and just chill and just listen to the waves. And like yeah. it, it feels like we're back in the Solomon, so out of the grid somewhere. Yeah. It's pretty. The name of the bay, it's called Radical Bay. Yeah. I think it's a pretty radical place. What delicacy are you making us for dinner? Today is my first day uh, preparing pizza. Yeah. Vegan, ultra vegan pizza. Vegan pizza. And yeah. tell us about our special crusts. It's, uh, we have, uh, instead of using uh, flour, we are going to use uh, quinoa based pizzas and also vegan pizza. Vegan cheese, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> vegan cheese, sunflower seeds with olive oil and a lot of stuff. But and this then... is the crust, it's made out of just soaked quinoa and then blended with um, water and garlic and herbs and stuff. And this will be our base. And then this is our vegan cheese. And then we have like all these toppings. Kat's got her beer. She's, she's ready to chill for the night. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Radical Bay? I think it's pretty rad. <laughs> Matt's going out fishing with corn. Corn fisher. <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt uses corn. <laughs> when we don't have anything okay. else. It's like his backup. So we just discovered something really crazy, which is that if you lean over the rail backwards and look up, it looks like the sky is the ocean and the ocean is the sky. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> This is my masterpiece. Yeah. Say it again, hold on. Be quiet for one second. Oh. la puta boca! la puta boca! It's my masterpiece. It's gorgeous! So we've been on Magnetic Island for a couple of days now. Uh, a little bit of filming missions, a lot of just relaxing. And again, believe it or not, we don't film everything. And we've got some new friends uh, that we've been hanging out with. They came on the other the boat the other night, drank a bag of goon, and really got to know each other. I'm pretty excited about them. So they are all um, Australian. They live here on Magnetic Island, and a couple of them work at the dive shop. So Lawrence is an aspiring underwater photographer, and his stuff is really good. His images are pretty impressive. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to kind of share some time with him, maybe learn from each other a little bit. Uh, then you've got Casper, uh, who is... Casper! Yeah. She's, As they say in Australian. Casper! Casper! On Maggie Island. This is Magnetic Island. They call it Maggie Island. And uh, she is working on her dive master. Then lastly, we've got Jasmine, which is an aspiring YouTuber. And so with that said, let's go meet him, shall we? <laughs> yeah. This is just a quarter of it as well. So. <laughs> Packing heat. Yeah. Got the goods. Oh my god, look at this little baby nugget. 
What's uh, what's our stowaway's name here? So this is Gizmo. He's actually Jazzy's dog, so I'm gonna give him back to you. <laughs> I'm Jasmine. And are you, where are you from originally? I'm from Canberra, so from Australia, the big island. <laughs> and what is your name? Hey, I'm Lawrence Shield, and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Yeah, trying to be an underwater photographer of the marine life. Last but not least. Hi. <laughs> what is your name, lovely? Uh, my name is Casper and I'm actually named after Casper the Friendly Ghost. So my dad and a lot of his best friends or brothers um, all got tattooed with Casper. Aww. So that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Kat, what are we doing? <laughs> you better be behind it. About to pull anchor so we can um, drive down to the Yangala so we're there in the morning. What's happening here? We're leaving. We're going on the overnight motor and to the Yangala. And it's very exciting because it's always cool to take um, new people out on an adventure. And people are always really excited and excited to see what it's like and a lot of people might not ever go on an overnight trip on the boat so it's very cool to be able to share that with some other people. How far we're going? <laughs> so we have about a 40 mile journey ahead of us tonight and if we average about five knots then that should put us there in eight hours. There's no boats anywhere behind us so we just flip around and then once we're out um, normally we don't always like to go in and out of bays at night, but in this case, we've been in and out a few times and it's very easy. So, it yeah. should be good. Let's go! Yeah, let's go! It's 6am, we're finally just getting to the wreck. You can hear the sound of the tanks pumping in the background. That's always like, to me, it's a good sound. Uh, I got woken up by a tour pump of tanks, which means that everybody's excited to go diving. Uh, it took us, I think we got here a little fast. It took us like nine hours to get here, which um, if you compare that to your car, like we only went 45 miles and it's just like a weird, comparison when you could have gotten here within an hour in your car and here we are doing an overnight or for nine hours to get here but we're getting here in perfect conditions the wind is calming down um, and that's why we, we actually motored into the wind all night long to get here right at the right time where the wind finally just calms down and now we're going to pick up the mooring and just start scuba diving for the next two days straight just boom 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 so This is not right But there's something else tells you it's time to take flight And the good will go with you Keep watch as you sleep 
stars overhead will guide your weary feet. your first dive on the Angala? It was awesome. The fish was amazing. There was so many fish. <laughs> the conditions couldn't have been better. <laughs> but you've been here before, right? No, this is my first time. Oh. It was insane. Yes. What was yeah. your best, what was your photo of the day? Um, probably of this octopus. Cat actually brought up this like discarded diver's bag and inside was an octopus. So that was really cool. I feel <laughs> What no, happened? no, I think. So you're only supposed to dive the Angala at slack tide. Slack tide. They tell you that. Because the current can be ripping here and some things have happened. I'll tell you a little story, in fact. Some guy, a cruiser, came out here and he was single handed boating. He didn't have a permit. Dove this thing by himself. Current took him. They found him in the Whit Sundays three days later, like many, 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 many miles from here. So it's no joke. But did that stop me? No. I went and dove and turned current time. Yeah. Well, I have a screaming headache now. Yeah. So. Me too. You too? Jordan. Too. We did it too. I was there. Yeah, we did it together. I act like I'm innocent. Yeah. Anyway, you. so we're both like on the safety stop, about to puke our brains out. So learn from our mistakes, kids, and um, don't dive in current. When or you have to get back. When you have to get back. When you, you don't, don't have somebody to pick you up. <laughs> don't kick against the current. Drift dives are cool and when they're going to yeah. pick you up, but don't kick against the current to the point where you start huffing and puffing. How was your day, Mr. Yeah? Very good. I have never had this feeling of uh, going under the water and being, not being able to focus on one fish because as soon as you move a little bit, you see another one in the corner of the eye. I see you saw another one here, there, there, there. There are thousands of fish down there. So. Uh, we dove a lot of wrecks uh, in the Solomons, but this is the first time that uh, the, actually the wreck took a second, like the back seat of the dive, and you just can like you are just this overwhelmed, looking everywhere. When you the Yongala, you just dive from the fish. Yeah. Like I, I have never seen that massive grouper. I didn't know that they could grow that big. It's it's insane. It's insanely insane. <laughs> yeah. Next time on Expedition Drenched, we visit a wallaby rescue center and as always do a whole lot of diving. It's so crazy because I just I just Nick gave it that name. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my David Attenborough Animal Planet voice. These are the powder blue baby. That's like Australia. That's like the crocodile guy. Crikey! 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 These are the blue butterflies of Magnetic Island. The cat's a <laughs> scat expert, animal yeah. scat expert. It's hard. It's hard. It's a Fresh, fresh pellets. <laughs> it has to be close. Yeah. Based on the, the temperature and the smell. <laughs> well, his and hers, koala. They don't tell you at the school that they have a cute claws. They tell you that they are the most huggable, precious, cute animals in whole Australia, and it's a lie. You don't have to mess with this animal. Don't mess it up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you need do you, do you, you need a foot massage? <laughs> if you want to know the recipe, check my latest video. <laughs> Come on! 
I, I think egg for eggs golem makes you imagine things that they are not there, okay? And there was this like a b baboon, babuin, I don't know, like the baboon, monkey, yeah. like with red face, round face, and then the like round head, like driving, driving. like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying, I'm not lying, it was there.